Well, moving along, and we told you earlier this week about big falls in cattle prices as a result of the El Nino weather effect and the worry that farmers are dumping stock at markets for fear they won't be able to feed them. Well, today, the Australian Bureau of Agricultural and Resource Economics and Sciences, ABES, said farm incomes will fall significantly this year with the lowest livestock prices, but also with drier growing conditions. The Executive Director of ABES is Dr Jared Greenville, who joins me now. Jared, many thanks for your time, as always. I mean, there have been bumpy years for Australian farmers in most parts of the country, but that, with the changing weather conditions, does seem to be about to change. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. And that's right. So we're coming off the back of two record production years, um, which saw record farm cash incomes and farm profits. Um, but with, as you say, those falling prices across the board um, for livestock, but also for you know, our grains internationally, and also the drier conditions, which is really putting a dampener on particularly our cropping production. We're seeing farm cash incomes, well, we're expecting farm cash incomes to fall by around 41%. Um, down from those really high levels over the last couple of years. So tell me, are there any areas which are especially affected by these changing conditions? Yeah, there's a few areas which are particularly affected. So on, on the cropping side, what we're really seeing is some of the areas in northern New South Wales going through to you know, southern Queensland and central Queensland and the northern cropping areas of Western Australia. They're particularly experiencing some pretty dry conditions, um, you know, some fairly... You know, poor rainfalls and, and also heat now. Um, and that's expecting, we're expecting very low production levels out of those. Um, and so those areas are particularly influenced by the climate. Um, as we move further south, we're seeing particularly South Australian producers getting affected more by livestock prices um, and those falling prices, both in cattle, but particularly in sheep at the moment where, where prices are, are well below what they were last year. And that's starting to really kind of put a dampener on, on what we're seeing in terms of farm outcomes. Because especially the wheat farmers and some of those grain farmers in WA ha had bumper years, record crops, and that also coincided with the war in Ukraine and the fact that the international markets for grains were so elevated as a result of the disruption of both Russia and Ukraine production. Yeah, over the last couple of years, we, we had, a, I guess, a confluence of some good events come together. So those high international prices because of both the, the impact of the war in Ukraine, but also because of dry conditions across much of the Northern Hemisphere and, and our competitors and other main, main grain producers. Um, that happened at the same time as we had excellent conditions. Um, we had a record winter crop last year. Um, and, and on the back of a very high winter crop the previous year. And so we went from this period of high production, high prices, to coming into one now where we've got, you know, falling production and significantly falling prices. So we've gone from, I guess, the, the sweet spot overall to, to one where, where times are going to be much more challenging. OK, so take me to some of those, uh, some of those graziers who have got the, the cattle and the sheep and whatever it might be. One of the real issues coming out of the drought was there was simply not enough stock in Australia. They had to build up the herds, build up the flocks to make certain that there was, you know, take, pre take pressure off meat prices. How do they look in terms of that rebuilding now that they're getting to a point where they're saying, actually, the prices are coming off, maybe we need to reduce the herd? Yeah, so we've definitely got that dynamic at play. So we've seen the national herd and flock rebuild to above levels of what it ended up being, you know, prior to the last drought that we went into, where we saw some significant amount of destocking. And that destocking also occurred at a time when we had African swine fever take off in China. So global protein prices were really high, and that supported that extra, I guess, rundown in both our herd and flock. Um, now we're at very high levels, um, and that gives us the opportunity to, to have very kind of high levels of production and we're seeing that come on but at the same time as you say the dry conditions are encouraging producers to destock in anticipation you know, of not having the the pasture and stuff available for for feed um, but also just to de-risk some of their enterprises as you don't want to be holding too much stock when you go into a dry season and so that's increased supply quite considerably and because of that increased supply overall coming out of australia that's having a dampening effect on global prices, particularly in the sheep meat area. OK, because there's one other aspect of this, and you see it at the supermarket, for example, is that any destocking, any elevation of the herds um, effectively means that meat prices around the country tend to come down during those periods of, well, that takes pressure off inflation, of course. 
Yeah, there is. So for consumers, uh, the higher supply and the lower prices will definitely flow through to lower meat prices at the supermarket. And, and we're starting to see some evidence of that, at least anecdotally, you're seeing some some you know discounts, discounting on particularly spring lamb as it comes in in that higher supply, um, but also a cost number of the kind of standard products we might get from minces and, and the like. So that will start to flow through and, and, and likely accelerate as we get we go go forward as particularly as this lambing season really starts to the supply hits the market. Okay, just one final quick one for you. This obviously has an impact on the national economy. What sort of impact will it have? Well, we're expecting overall that the impact on agricultural production value, which is, I guess, the, that kind of measure of economic activity, it will come back from what we saw around, you know, the $92 billion of last year back to about $80 billion. And so it's quite a fall. And so that will take, effectively takes money out of the regional economies. Um, and, and it also reduces our, our total export earnings. So we will have that impact going on. But to put it into perspective, it's still given, even though that we've got these, you know, these pressures at the farm sector and particularly felt at individual farms, overall, it's the third highest value of agricultural production that we've ever seen. So in this intermittent period where we go from this period of very high and high production and, and, and value to one where we're transitioning to a, a lower, more challenging season, at the moment, there's still money coming into rural economies, but it certainly would be a watch as we get further along into the year and into next year. Jared Greenville from AB. It's always good to chat to you. Many thanks for your time on the program today. Excellent. Thanks again.